Hey guys, welcome back to Engineering Education. Um, in this uh, new series of videos, we're going to go over the fundamentals of engineering exam or the FE exam and some of the types of problems that you'll see on the exam. Now this is going to be dedicated towards only the electrical portion of it um, and we can, in other um, playlists or other video sets, we can go over the other topics, math, probability, and whatnot. But this uh, set of videos is going to concentrate on circuit analysis, um, you know, electronic circuits, passive circuits, active circuits, um, that sort of thing. And these are the type of problems that you'll see on the exam, and they're going to get progressively harder as the videos go along. So here on the left hand side, I have a circuit, the DC circuit. Um, this is probably one of the easier problems that you'll see on the FE exam. And here we got a DC source, a 2 volt DC source with a internal resistance of half an ohm. You have this T network here in the middle of one ohm resistors. And then on the right hand side you have a 1 amp uh, current source. And the problem here is asking uh, to find the power dissipated in the resistor R2. So we are looking for essentially P2 um, in this guy right here, in this resistor here. And so if we're going to ahead, go ahead and solve this step by step, but if you want to do this on your own, I suggest you pause the video, uh, try it on your own, see if we can get the same answer. And um, you know, when you're ready to continue, just hit play and um, we'll go step by step. So there are many different ways to attack this problem. Um, the one we're going to use here um, is just simple KCL, KVL. And um, the first step that we're going to do here is we're going to apply KCL. So KCL. And we're going to apply it at the T node here. So right there in between R1, R3, and R2. And if you recall, KCL states that the sum of currents leaving a specific node has to be equal to zero. So in this case, we have currents I1, I2, and I3 either entering or leaving this node. And so the equation goes like this. You have uh, minus I1, since it's negative, since it's entering the node. Anything leaving the node we'll consider positive. Plus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. And then from there we can we can solve for I2, right? So I2 is simply just I1 plus I3. Okay, this one's not coming out right. There we go. So that is the first equation that we need to solve this, um, solve for the power dissipated in R2. Next, we are going to apply, let's box this because that's an important equation. Next, we're going to apply uh, KVL, all right? And so we can apply KVL in a few different places. I'm going to switch colors here. We can apply it in this loop here to KVL in that loop. We can apply it in this loop here. And so we're going to apply it on the left-hand side um, of this circuit. And so as you recall, KVL is the states that the sum of voltage drops across any loop has to equal to zero. So in this case, when we do this loop, we can do minus 2 volts, which is the DC source on the left-hand side, uh, plus I'm going to put RS and R1 in series. Uh, add them up since they're in series. So Rs plus R1, Rs plus R1, and the same current is going through both of them, I1. 
and then you have the voltage drop across R2, which is um, just simply R2 times I2. So I2 times R2, and that the sum of all those voltage drops has to equal to zero. So this is the next key equation that we get. Um, and you know, solving this equation in red for I2, we get the following. Let me bring this down a bit. Okay. So we got I2 is equal to, okay, you got two volts. Bring it over to the right hand side. You get two. Okay, let's redraw that. You get two. Okay, and then you subtract um, the this voltage here, the RS plus R1 times I1. So then we can subtract RS, RS plus R1, I1. And then we can divide it by R2. And that should give us the current I2. And combining these equations, we can, we can solve for uh, the current I2.